Russia has launched an intense ground campaign to capture a key Ukrainian city in the eastern Donbass region. Ukrainian officials report Russian troops have been storming the city of Severodonetsk, about 90 miles from the Russian border. It's one of a few major cities in the Donbass still under Ukrainian control. President Vladimir Zelensky called the situation in the east indescribably difficult. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb joins me now from Dnipro, Ukraine. That's just to the west of the Donbass. MTS, what can you tell us about the fighting that's happening in the Donbass right now? Hey, Lana, very good to talk to you. Yeah, look, the situation is pretty bleak, pretty grim. Um, as you illustrate on the ground, I mean, it's really just Russia just steaming forward and seizing as much territory as possible. Now, we understand that Russia has abandoned the strategy of encircling the entire region. What we understand they're doing is uh, pursuing a strategy known as uh, a cauldron, where they basically circle specific areas and basically boil the water. Uh, and by that, it means really just sort of shrinking that area and putting a whole lot of pressure on those Ukrainian fighters. Now, we have seen some of those Ukrainian forces strategically withdrawing is the language they're using of certain areas to prevent that from happening. Because if this whole cauldron strategy that Russia is pursuing does happen, it basically means these Ukrainian fighters are trapped in these pockets and suddenly they start running out of supplies. They start running out of weapons. Uh, and that, of course, uh, becomes a pretty difficult situation for them. Uh, and that is something that they want to avoid. But really, when we look at the Donbass and we look at all the firepower that Russia is throwing at this place, I mean, we understand there's around 10,000 Russian soldiers on the ground in this specific moment. And, um, and it's not good. Uh, we understand that, as you rightly pointed out in your introduction, that the city of uh, Sievro Donetsk is one of the largest cities there, uh, and it's looking close to falling to Russia. And if that happens, the whole province of Luhansk is essentially going to be in Russian control. And what is the Donbass? The Donbass is a region which is essentially two provinces, uh, and that province is one of them. So if that's gone, it's only another one to go. And Russia very determined to seize that too. Lana. And what's happening with civilians? Have they been able to evacuate these areas in the east? I mean, in short, yes, uh, but what we've seen time and again, especially these areas which are just being brutalized by Russia, it, the people who stay are usually the people who can't leave. It's usually the elderly, it's usually the infirm, it's just people who can't pick up everything and flee the violence no matter how bad it is. And we've seen in, in our reporting, uh, meeting with elderly people who are terrified, who are hungry, who don't have food, who don't have water, uh, and yet cannot leave their homes uh, and are shelled almost relentlessly by these Russian forces. Uh, and so the Ukrainian leadership, of course, is trying to encourage as many people to leave. But when you hear from those folks, particularly the older ones, they say, this is the only home we have. Uh, and so we stay, uh, knowing full well that it could very likely cost them their lives. Mana. And Tiaz, what role are pro-Russia separatists playing in this conflict? Look, we got to remind our viewers that this conflict we're seeing in Ukraine, particularly in the Donbass region, has been going on since 2014. Uh, and this is where these pro-Russian separatists, aided by Russia, helped uh, Russia annex the Crimea region and keep this area of the Donbass destabilized. Uh, I'm going to throw a number at you, 14,000. That is how many people were killed from 2014 up until the start of this latest war with Russia. 14,000. So it really gives you a sense of just what the situation in the Donbass was even before the horrors that we're seeing now. Uh, and so those Russian backed separatists are part of that. They're committing, uh, or rather, they're working alongside these Russian forces to seize as much of this territory as possible. But as we've been seeing, all it is is complete and utter devastation for the people who live there. No. Well, the Ukrainian military has also announced a counteroffensive to reclaim the southern city of Kherson. That was the first major Ukrainian city to fall into Russian hands. I'm wondering, MTS, what you can tell us about that. 
Yeah, uh, Kherson is, of course, a, a major city. Uh, Russia has been in control of it. People there have to speak Russian. Russian state television sort of blasts on their radios and onto their TVs. Life there uh, is very difficult. Any kind of dissent is sort of uh, cracked down upon in a pretty severe way way. Uh, and Ukraine, of course, is trying to seize back that territory. Now, a few days ago, uh, my team and I were on the, you know, on the edges of the Kherson area where we came under pretty significant Russian shelling. And yet when we were speaking to the major there, he told us that we're in a, you know, we're in an offensive position here. You know, we're not in a defensive position. We want to take back this territory. We don't want Russia to have more of Kherson. And the area we were in, was occupied by, by Russia about six weeks ago. So in their minds, they can push Russia back. But mm. we have to, again, bear in mind that Kherson city itself is a pretty big city. Uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to, to take back. But Ukraine is very determined to do that. Lana. All right, MTS, thank you.